Hello there, I'm Nafis Salatic and this is Across the Balkans. Ethnic tensions have flared up in northern Kosovo and once again it's over license plates. Hostilities between the ethnic Serbs and the Pristina government began after the regional police department refused to issue a warning to those who had not transferred to Kosovo-issued plates. Several cars have been burned in recent weeks. Local Serbs prefer to use plates issued in Belgrade, but these are illegal in Kosovo. Hundreds of demonstrators gathered in North Mitrovica singing the national anthem of Serbia and dressed in symbolic clothes to show their loyalty to Belgrade. They said they want to send a strong message to Pristina and the international community and call for an end to the harassment of Serbs. This followed the first collective resignation of Kosovo Serbs from the country's institutions since 2013. They left the parliament, the judiciary and the police. The mayors of the four Serb-majority municipalities along the Kosovo-Serbia border also resigned. Once again, I invite all Serb citizens of our country to not abandon the institutions, not to resign, not to leave their jobs, because there would be less service for the people. Kosovo Serbs don't have pressure from us. The pressure is coming from Belgrade, which wants to destabilize Kosovo, but it will never achieve this. This is neither the first nor the last time that Serbia is attacked on the issue of Kosovo. We are certainly talking about major political, almost tectonic changes. Kosovo's relationship with Serbia and local Serbs has largely been guided by the EU-facilitated dialogue. Recently, there has been a Franco-German push for a final agreement to be signed between the two countries. While no official version of the proposal has been published, EU officials pledged their support for the agreement at last week's summit for the Western Balkans in Berlin. After two years of talks, the six Western Balkan countries agreed on the mutual recognition of identity cards which provide free movement for their citizens. The deals have been called a breakthrough, especially at a time of ongoing tensions between Serbia and Kosovo. Sibel Karkush reports from Berlin. Europe is not complete without the Western Balkans. Having hosted the leaders of Albania, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Kosovo, Northern Macedonia, Montenegro and Serbia to revive the so-called Berlin process, German Chancellor Olaf Scholz has emphasized that the country's accession to the European Union is in the interest of the bloc. After eight years of talks and two years of tough negotiations, there's finally some progress. The leaders of the six Western Balkan nations, along with EU officials, have signed three agreements. It's a big success for all citizens of the region, and it shows that the six Western Balkan states are serious with moving closer to the EU through regional cooperation. The three signed agreements that allow citizens of the region to travel with their IDs. Furthermore, the states of the Western Balkans will recognize each other's academic and work diplomas. It is these very concrete steps that will improve the lives of each individual and bring the region closer together. And leaders say what sounds like a formality is indeed a major milestone for the region. It will not only make daily lives for the citizens of the Western Balkans a lot easier, it's also creating the base for a common regional market that's expected to boost the economy. But it's also creating more stability in a region that emerged from ethnic conflicts in the 1990s. So with these agreements, leaders are sending a strong signal to Europe that cooperation in the region is possible. Russia's brutal war of aggression against Ukraine forces us to stand together to preserve Europe's freedom and security. It is high time to overcome regional conflicts that have continued for far too long, conflicts that divide you and hold your countries back on your European path. The war in Ukraine has highlighted other issues too. Serbia in particular has been struggling to balance its ties with the Kremlin. Unlike other EU nations, it has not joined sanctions against Moscow. That's why a German official even went as far as saying that Belgrade needed to choose sides. The EU's or Moscow's warning it of consequences for its bid to join the European Union. 
But the war has also highlighted other effects of the war, such as the severe energy crunch that's hitting Western Balkan nations just as hard as it's hitting other European nations. And that's why the European Union has promised $1 billion in aid for the region. The first part is 500 million euros in grants as a very immediate financial support for the six Western Balkan countries to put them in a position for uh, the very short term to support vulnerable households and vulnerable businesses. The second part, the other 500 million euros in grants, will be dedicated to investments in energy infrastructure. Here in Berlin, the leaders have also discussed issues ranging from climate protection to digitization and migration. And that's a topic where Albania's prime minister has not been holding back to criticize the UK's interior minister statements that singled out Albanians for their role in illegal migration. And when it comes to uh, criminals in the British uh, jails, the number is uh, less than 1%. So to single out the community and to talk about gangsters and about uh, criminals doesn't sound really uh, something that is very British. It sounds more like uh, screams from a madhouse. All six Western Balkan nations have once again shown that they're willing to join the European Union, but they're still at very different stages of their accession process. Bosnia and Herzegovina, for example, has only recently received the green light from the European Commission that it should receive the official EU candidate status. Yet there's still no official time frame as to when that should happen. And EU leaders have once again emphasized that the Western Balkan nations need to overcome any internal conflicts, in particular between Serbia and Kosovo, before any EU membership can happen. The EU's foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell, says the recent developments have put years of hard work under the Belgrade-Pristina dialogue at risk. Let's go straight to our panel. Agon Malici joins us from Tirana. He's a policy analyst and also the co-founder of Zbunker, a current affairs blog in Kosovo. From Belgrade, we have Stevan Gajic. He's a political scientist and a research associate at the Institute of European Studies. And from Berlin, we have Bodo Weber. He's a senior associate of the Democratization Policy Council, who specializes on the Western Balkans, German and EU foreign policy. Gentlemen, hello and welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Bodo, let me, start, uh, let me start with you. Are the recent developments at the border a massive step backwards uh, for Pristina and Bel Belgrade dialogue and for the entire region? And who is to blame for yet another crisis? Well, um, this is definitely the most serious crisis in the political dialogue uh, in its uh, decade of existence. Uh, we've had, um, we've had um, mayors, um, mayors resigning, we've had ministers designing, resigning in the past couple of years, but we never had this collective resignation, including police and, and uh, lawyers, uh, judges and, and prosecutors in the north. Um, who is to blame? I mean, this is, uh, um, to a large part, I would blame the West. Um, just noting that the political crisis uh, dialogue is not in crisis only recently, it's in limbo and in crisis for, for almost at least half a decade. Um, and uh, so, and uh, in in the recent context, um, I think this uh, there are two two elements um, that make up this crisis. Uh, at least two. One is uh, that the previous uh, post um, uh, post uh, land swap negotiations phase um, in the dialogue. Uh, focusing on low-level issues, uh, seemingly low-level issues like bilateral issues under EU Special Representative Lightjack uh, were just not leading anywhere. And then the second one is the German-French initiative uh, aiming at getting the uh, dialogue back on track to its core, which is the state of dispute. So I think one has to see it in that context and on the other end in the context of that uh, 
the relationship between the EU and uh, Serbia and uh, the long-term policy of trading democracy for the dialogue which left the EU uh, empty-handed both on the dialogue and, and on democracy uh, is just not sustainable. Uh, Agon, uh, as we speak and as Bodo mentioned, uh, Serbs and Mitrovic are, are continuing to leave the state institutions. What does uh, this mean for the people there? Well, it's uh, really uncharted territory uh, in the sense that we have no rule of law institutions. So uh, um, we are effectively back to the pre-2013 situation. Um, uh, so now the question is who will perform these, you know, uh, daily uh, tasks, uh, whether it, you know, ULEX can pick some of that up, uh, whether, uh, you know, uh, K4 <laughs> will, can intervene at some point if the security situation deteriorates. Um, uh, because right now, the way things are, uh, Kosovo institutions are in a way uh, obliged by law to go in. Uh, I mean, majority Albanian, like police. And if that happens, then this could really lead to uh, serious security incidents. Um, the reason why this escalation is the most serious, as Bodo also mentioned, is that, you know, it's not only resignations of mayors, uh, because now uh, we, uh, Kosovo will announce new elections for those. Uh, that, that definitely will be a problem, because if Serbs don't participate, then we can technically have Albanian mayors elected in the north, uh, because there are some pockets and villages uh, of neighborhoods with Albanian majority there. But the withdrawal of judges and policemen, which was done through the Brussels agreement, that effectively leaves the north as a, a gray area in terms of rule of law uh, that somebody has to fill. And if Kosovo does that, that, that could create a security crisis. If then K4 intervenes, uh, then that's, that's a step back for Kosovo, because in a way it separates the north effectively uh, as some sort of an area beyond uh, Kosovo's control. So this is, uh, in a way, the risks uh, that Kosovo's government undertook uh, by, by sort of um, uh, 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 you know, uh, and and what Vucic is in a way uh, trying to to do by with this uh, with this withdrawal from the institutions. Uh, Stevan uh, Pristina and the government in Pristina uh, they are blaming uh, Serbian President Vucic for the latest uh, escalation uh, in North Mitrovica. Uh, on the other hand, um, uh, Vucic says Pristina is violating the Brussels Agreement from 2013 because of its unilateral moves. How do you see uh, the situation uh, in uh, in uh, Mitrovica at the moment. Situation in Mitrovica is a result of uh, years of bad policies, uh, both uh, by uh, by EU and uh, by Serbian government for uh, even starting these negotiations under the circumstances uh, that uh, they were led. Uh, EU uh, has shown to be an unreliable partner or unreliable mediator here. Uh, since uh, it was uh, constantly pressuring the Serbian uh, side to uh, to make concessions, which it did, and it made many concessions. It did, I would say, everything possible and uh, uh, impossible to appease the West. Uh, and uh, now uh, uh, that not the single serious uh, concession was made by Pristina, and that was this uh, community of Serbian municipalities, uh, it was not formed al uh, after almost uh, 10 years. Not only that, uh, the, um, the parliament uh, uh, of interim institutions in Pristina have uh, actually ratified these this, uh, the, the Brussels agreements, the one from 2013 and, and the one from 2015. Uh, so uh, they have obliged themselves to uh, implement uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the agreement and especially the formation of the uh, institutions. Why do you uh, think? Why do you think Pristina is avoiding uh, to establish a union of Serbian municipalities? I really don't know uh, because uh, I think uh, that the Brussels agreement in general was uh, absolutely in favor of Pristina, and this was an, actually a very small concession, uh, and uh, Pristina. Uh, is jeopardizing uh, uh, what they achieved. Uh, in a way, I'm I'm glad that uh, that the Brussels uh, the Brussels uh, process uh, is is stopped because uh, uh, because uh, it was leading uh, to the uh, wrecking basically of international law of the UN Resolution 1244. 
which uh, guarantees uh, sovereignty of uh, of Serbia on all of its territory, including uh, Kosovo and Metohija. So uh, I really don't see uh, anything rational here. I think that uh, Albin uh, Kurti uh, is really not doing a favor to the, uh, uh, let's say, Albanian national interest in, uh, by, by being so harsh. Uh, here, I think that uh, that uh, the uh, KLA leadership uh, was much more cunning when it comes to uh, negotiations with uh, international factors and, uh, and uh, with the Serbian authorities. Uh, I would agree with Mr. Weber that the EU was trading uh, democracy for, for geopolitics, uh, and that's why it was tolerating um, uh, it was tolerating a uh, lack of democracy both uh, in Pristina and in Belgrade. And now uh, we have a res result. Uh, EU uh, is uh, has shown its uh, impotence uh, in uh, implementing policies, uh, and I think that the only way out is to put the negotiations back uh, where they belong, and that is the United Nations. Uh, Bodo, I... uh, okay, jump in, go ahead. Yeah, if I may just counter that, I mean, I have my own share of criticism of uh, Kosovo's government, but I really think that the previous commentator made a one-sided uh, argument there on uh, responsibilities. I, uh, you know, the Brussels agreement, yes, it absolutely was problematic because, uh, you know, uh, both sides were, uh, mis were dragging their feet, Serbia yes, also on a lot of the agreements. The key problem here is for Kosovo is that uh, the dialogue has been prolonged too much uh, without uh, Kosovo getting what it really needs, and that is the recognition. Uh, for Kosovo, it does not make sense. Uh, you know, Kosovo already went through the dialogue process once, through the Ahtisari process, where it already gave considerable concessions. Uh, uh, and, you know, reaching the limit of uh, the functional state. Now, the risk is, you know, uh, for Kosovo to concede even more uh, without getting the recognition. Uh, uh, so, in that sense, this is the key bottleneck right now. Uh, while that, the Brussels dialogue is not working, uh, because Serbia seeks to prolong this as much as possible while uh, uh, trying to get from Kosovo the types of concessions that would make it internally dysfunctional uh, at the same time uh, postponing the recognition. This has been the key problem. This is why the West is the, the biggest uh, uh, you know, party to blame, because it has for a very long time uh, uh, had a, uh, an approach of appeasement towards Serbia and towards uh, uh, Vucic uh, by giving him space and time uh, uh, to postpone uh, the recognition. Uh, otherwise, you know, uh, I, I think that uh, this is the reason why the whole Brussels uh, uh, process is unraveling, because uh, for Kosovo it doesn't make sense uh, to uh, make more concessions without uh, uh, getting the reason why it has even entered these negotiations. And, uh, bringing so you, this, you don't uh, think we will see any change in Albin Kurti's approach uh, uh, moving forward and after this uh, latest escalation? If uh, it, it remains to be seen, uh, you know, for Kosovo, it, it, you know, this, the dialogue process, uh, I really think it offers an opportunity. I think the allies, the key reason why this is happening right now, we need to have this in mind, is that against, this is happening against the backdrop of a French-German proposal to unlock the dialogue uh, uh, in, a, in a way that it would allow Kosovo to be recognized by the five EU uh, non-recognizing countries, open a path to NATO membership in the Council of Europe. Uh, uh, while at the same time uh, uh, looking at a model of the association, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't think, you know, uh, an association with strong executive powers will not pass in Kosovo, but, you know, uh, there could be a likelihood of something of a soft ASM. Uh, 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 this will, you know, this is still extremely sensitive in Kosovo. I, I, I don't think it will pass, but I definitely think it will not pass if Kosovo is not unlocked internationally, uh, if it does not get recognition, or if it does not at least uh, get the five non-recognizers and an open path to NATO. Right. This is the reason why I think I think it, the, the key government officials in Serbia have expressed the reservations over this French-German proposal, and the reason why they're, in a way, trying to torpedo it, uh, 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 and finding a government in Kosovo that is... Uh, uh, that is also kind of, you know, reluctant. Uh, in a way, it's a mutual interest, maybe, to to uh, to not let this proposal uh, go through. Uh, how do you see uh, this uh, moving uh, forward? NATO also, NATO Chief Jens Stoltenberg warning both sides, uh, asking them to de-escalate, but saying they are ready to intervene. What if it comes to the conflict? Uh, will NATO intervene? Let's be clear what we are dealing here with um, outside national notions of what we're dealing with. Um, the political dialogue was uh, a way which functioned very well, had a historic beginning breakthrough in 2013 with your April agreement to 
make a break in, in the status dispute between Serbia and Kosovo to uh, Serbia that uh, at least at that time was aiming at uh, becoming a member of the EU um, to help Serbia to um, uh, operationalize what uh, what is long time knowledge in Serbia that it has lost Kosovo and Kosovo will not get back um, if it wants to you know uh, have a, 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 a Euro EU integration and uh, the current regime basically accepted that um, in the April agreement in, in at all uh, participating in the political dialogue that's I assume why Mr. Gaich uh, is not a fan of the political dialogue but the problem was you know that uh, the, uh, the EU and the US were always lacking a long-term strategy defining the whole process from its end point that everybody all parties in the dialogue knew and know until today what it is that is um, full normalization uh, as bilateral relations between two states and recognition of uh, Serbia by uh, Kosovo by Serbia. Um, and instead, you know, we uh, the West allowed for both sides, as Mr. Gaic pointed out rightly, uh, to play the system, to undermine uh, agreements. So I just have time, we, it, Bodo, I have to jump in, sorry, yeah. because I do want to ask uh, the ne next question um, to all of you, and I don't have much time. I will give 20 seconds to each one of you. Uh, is uh, the situation that we are currently uh, are in in Europe with the Ukraine war, uh, is this war dividing the communities in Kosovo even further? And uh, is this the reason why we are seeing this last couple of months even more tensions in Kosovo? Stefan, uh, let me start with you. Well, uh, the tensions uh, in, in Kosovo and Metohia are there uh, one way or the other. Uh, of course, the context of war in East of Europe uh, is very important. Uh, I have to say that, uh, that the West uh, has been uh, hostile towards the Serbs, not only on the question of, uh, of Kosovo and Metohia, but also when it comes to Bosnia and Herzegovina, uh, when it comes to the rights of uh, Serbs in former Yugoslav republics, uh, such as uh, uh, Croatia, Montenegro and other uh, places. So uh, after these years of appeasement, which, uh, which Belgrade uh, has, has been doing for the last uh, for the last 22 years, um, of course, uh, that uh, that there is a lot of resentment, uh, which is very similar, I would say, to the resentment, uh, especially when it comes to uh, to the EU, uh, that uh, the Turkish society uh, has this uh, uh, fatigue of uh, of the population that uh, that really I don't really see this uh, uh, integration process as a sweet carrot anymore. Uh, and of course, when we combine that with uh, the impotence of EU uh, to, to implement any of its uh, policies, uh, when we see that, uh, that states such as Germany are political midgets, uh, I mean, look what happened in the North Stream, with the North Stream and, and, and nobody from Germany uh, really tried to investigate or to, okay. or to, to, okay. to talk about Thank you. Of course, uh, uh, what would the reaction of ordinary Serbs be? Okay, uh, Agon, uh, your final thoughts. It's uh, absolutely the current geopolitical context has amplified the existing vulnerabilities and fragilities. Uh, what the, you know what we're seeing the tensions right now are in a way indirectly related to the, the bigger uh, um, uh, global fight. I do think, however, it has also created the, some somewhat also opportunities in finding solutions in the Balkans. And the key reason for that being that Russia's role in the regions has been weakened. So Russia is no longer. Uh, has the kind of leverage it used to have. Uh, uh, unfortunately, you know, uh, I mean, unfortunately, unfortunately, the West, the West is a bit more unified now than it was uh, a couple of years ago. There's a bit more of transatlantic unity. However, uh, we don't see enough. Uh, if we don't, if we don't see more decisive role by the West, you know, we could miss this historic opportunity to settle the Kosovo-Serbia dispute. Okay, Bodo, 20 seconds for you. Well, the Kosovo conflict has ne never been one between uh, primarily the, the ethnic communities in Kosovo. It's been one between Belgrade and Pristina and remained. And unfortunately, uh, a, a constant has been that the Kosovo Serb community, particularly in the in the north of the country, has always been constantly the main collateral damage. And I fear that will be the case again. Gentlemen, thank you for being uh, our guests on Across the Balkans.
It's time to look at some other stories making headlines in the region this week. Another Western Balkans summit was held in Albania's capital Tirana. Migration and the conflict in Ukraine were high on the agenda. The EU and Western Balkans underlined the need to step up efforts to prevent and monitor the spread of Russian disinformation in the region. They also signed an anti-smuggling operational partnership to combat migrant smuggling and increase the region's border management capacity. The European Commission says Bulgaria is ready to receive the first payment of a recovery fund amounting to $1.3 billion. The Commission President Ursula von der Leyen congratulated Sofia for carrying out important reforms against money laundering and also in education. She says once member states give the green light, Bulgaria will get its payment. And U2 frontman Bono has announced that Ben Affleck and Matt Damon have produced a new documentary about the band's reaction to the 1990s Bosnian War. Kiss the Future will cover U2's 1993 satellite performance in Sarajevo and the live concert in 1997 after the war ended. Bono says he got the idea for the film while on a trip to Kiev to support Ukraine against Russia. He believes the subject links the attacks in Sarajevo to those in Kiev and will provide hope for Ukrainians. Okay, that's it from me and the whole Across the Balkans team. See you next time. Bye-bye for now.